Hey there guys, some of you have been asking me to do the Morgana fight with the new Nier stuff. So we're going to be going to the Empress Resolution and doing a speed clear using 5 units, basically with just 2B. So we're going to go here, we're not going to take a friend, that's going to get you the 5 man clear done, as well as the 10 turn clear. Um, but after you do this, you can start adding your own unit and just bring like you know a dud unit per clear and cycle them through to get you the the, the unit mission clear but this is the party we're going to use so we're going to be using Kresnik who is here for literally no reason other than filling the morale gauge um, Sukiko is going to be for imbuing the party with light she's going to chip in a tiny speck of damage on one turn but really she's mostly here for the light field and for morale fill because we're doing a turn three clear we want to speed fill that morale, so we're taking all units that can fill morale. Sylvie, same thing. She can do a bunch of burst morale in the first two turns with her Magnus, so we're going to take her to fill tons of morale. Um, she also does a good LB buff. Kaito is for get rid getting rid of the boss's buffs as well as breaking and all that. Um, in Paraline and 2B, a lot of damage. Let's get in here and do it, and I'll explain turn by turn what's going on. I'll show you the gear afterwards. And you can use the same setup with a friend's 2B if they're properly built. And if you don't have your own, and you can, you know, put it, put like a carry unit on your own party and do, you know, a bunch of clears that way. Okay, so with the ambush, we're using a lot of autocast gear, again, to fill the morale gauge. I'll show you all the gear in a moment. But Sylvie on turn one is going to do... Vines and Petals, that's resistance buffs as well as morale fill, and burgeoning defense. We don't need the mitigation, but it does fill a bunch of morale. Um, Sukiko on turn one is going to Omomori for morale, purification because we have a big imperil, we got to get rid of that. And then we're going to imbue the party with light to start dealing a little bit of damage. Kresnik, Arcane Stimulant, it's always here for. Um, 2B is going to do her shifted LB for the modifier boost. We also want to deal a little bit of damage. So Kaito is going to, in this order, downpour. Um, oh, we got to shift. We start him in the base form for auto casting, but then we shift. Uh, we're going to do downpour. Then we're going to do deep submersion. And then we're going to do torrential blade storm. So we're going to click Kaito first. That way the fairy killer goes on to 2B. And then we're going to chain. Now the first part of her LB won't chain, but the rest of it will. A little bit of damage on turn one, but the big damage is going to be turn three. So there we go. The more important thing is we're filling the morale gauge. Now we're not using a cover tank, but the only AoE damage in phase one is ice with a 50 in peril. So we're all using 70 or better ice resist, and we've got 80% resist from Sylvie. So that makes us immune to the AoE attacks, and Sylvie's the provoker for all the single target stuff. Okay, a lot of auto casting, so give this just a moment. Wait for all this to finish. For filling the morale gauge. And you can you can do a slower clear, by the way. If you can't if you can't fill the morale quickly enough by turn three, doing it, you can go you can go as long as turn five. Just don't go below 70% and don't go past turn five with this party. But you, you can wait until turn five to burst. It'll be totally fine. The morale gauge will be at 200 percent It'll be very easy at that point. But we're going for turn three. So Kresnik is going to Arcane Stimulant. Sukiko is going to do Purification, Protection, and the Light Imperil Field on this turn. Sylvie is going to shift. We're going to use her other Magnus, the, the big buff one. I've got your back on 2B for the 400 buffs and the LB buff. And then Double Cheerful to fill that morale gauge. All about the morale. Now 2B is going to do Supreme. Don't worry about True, true Charge. It'll get dis the Imperil will be dispelled anyway, and we, we're, we're already imbued from Tsukiko. So we're going to do just Supreme for the 150 Amplify and double Human Killer, and we're going to chain that with Kaito. Now because we used an LB, the boss has a undispellable 100 defense buff, but we have Kaito, it can be Kaitoed. So we're going to use Kaito to Unpredictable Tide to get rid of the boss's buff. Then we're going to bolt in to match our 2B with Deep Submersion and Blade Storm. That gets rid of the boss's buff and um, does some damage. Now, just make sure you don't push the boss below 70%. So again, we filled more morale gauge, more attacks, 
And the boss only reapplies those buffs from using an LB every fifth turn. But we're going to kill it kill away before then. But Kaito got rid of them for us. Okay, so now it is time to kill the boss. Now, because we filled the morale gauge above 150, that unlocked Kaito's really good breaks and debuffs. We're going to use all of those right now. So we wait for the auto casting. All right, Kaito is going to deadly and natural. That's going to be 90 breaks, imperil everything, um, weapon imperil everything, etc. Because the boss keeps dispelling all that. We're going to use Sylvie to use her shifted LB. That's going to be um, modifier boost, stat buff, LB buff, etc., etc. Sukiko is going to shift, and she's going to chip in a little bit of damage. Now, depending on variants, or if your friend is EX3, or your 2B is EX3, mine is not. But she can actually solo finish it off from here. But just to guarantee that we kill it, we're going to use Sukiko to chip in a triple solar flare. It's not going to do that much damage. This just removes variants, removes variants from the equation. Um, Kresnik has nothing to do, so ignore him. Um, so we're going to send 2B. We're going to wait like a split moment. Then we're going to send Sukiko. That way they kind of sort of chain because they're different chaining families. And boom, big finish. There is the end of the boss. That was actually a low roll on um, 2B. I saw the last hit was 1.5, but there it is. So 3 billion damage. The boss has 3.3 billion HP. We did some chip damage on turn 1 and 2, and the big finish on turn 3. Now, if you wanted to wait until, let's say, turn 4 or turn 5 with a maximized morale gauge, 2B will heavily, heavily overkill. Um, you know, as you see here, 2B technically did all the damage. The boss, like I said, the boss has 3.3 billion HP. So between turns 1, 2, and 3, um, 2B, I think I said Tsukika, I'm sorry, I meant 2B. Um, between, between turns 1, 2, and 3, 2B did more than the boss's max health. So this boss was solo killed by 2B only. We did chain with Kaito and we did chain with Tsukiko a little bit just for some bonus damage. That way, if we had a low variant roll, we would have still done it, but there it is. Um, and again, if you, if you want to go until turn four or five, wait till the morale gauge is at 200%, super easy. Just don't bring the boss below 70%. That turns on more attacks we're not built for. And don't um, don't go past turn 5 because, again, the boss does more attacks on turn 5 that we're not built for. So let me show you the gear. And, again, the, a friend 2B is all you technically need. Plus the units I used. All right. So Kresnik, literally here for morale only. All he does. You could technically replace Kresnik with something like Chizuru and fill morale on turn one and two and then burst on turn three with her as well. Um, you know, it would, you, you'd, you'd lose a bunch of morale, but Chizuru would add a bunch of damage. You could add a two and you can, you know, have fun trying to chain her LB. Before you say in the comments, I do realize it can be chained if you work with it. You can also macro it, etc. I just don't like the fact that you have to go that extra step for two, for, for eight, A2. A2. Yeah, so when I complain about A2 and her frames, it's not that it's impossible to use. You can absolutely macro A2 and get it to work or, you know, practice and practice and get lucky, etc. and perfect chain it. But my frustration with A2 is the fact that you have to do that in the first place. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Um, Kresnik can be replaced with either another morale filler or just another damage dealer. Sukiko, um, Again, mostly for the morale fill, but she does do light support. That way we get a little bit of turn one burst. You can replace her with another burster, same thing. Sylvie is a little important because she fills morale and buffs the elemental resist. She's also our provoker. Kaito is basically required for the strategy because he removes the boss's um, uh, buffs from using an LB. Technically speaking, no, you would actually have to do it that way because three turns... Yeah, yeah. So if you want to use... Um, Bring Kaito. Kaito makes it very easy. And then 2B. So here, here, here's the gear we use. So Kresnik, all that matters is the party has 70 or better ice resist. All they need. Ice resist of 70%, that's it. You don't need evasion. You don't need dark resist. Nothing. Just 70 ice resist and you're fine. Except for your tank. So we just filled up morale gain. Auto casting, batons, lilies, phoenix energy, philosopher's stone, um, dual wielding, a morale card. Now, we, we, we didn't need all this. We did a grand total of, what, what was it, 3.4 on 2B, 
one on or 0.1 on Kaito and 0.3. So we did something like 3.8 billion out of 3.5. So if you can't fill all this morale gauge, you should still be fine. But, you know, all the morale fill you can possibly fit. Tsukiko in the base form, as much morale fill as you can fit. Other than that, some ice resist. Shift form is built for damage. There we go. Now her damage isn't great because we're using a morale card, zero magic on it. She's, she's missing about two, about 2,000 magic, but um, Philly morale is more important than her personal damage. Uh, Paladin Sylvie is our passive provoker. Now she needs to have, after a buff, 150 to dark, light, ice, and um, that's it, dark, light, and ice. Um, she needs to be at 150 to all of those. She's using she's using a 80% buff. So yeah, full evasion, passive provoke, and death immunity. Using an LB does trigger death, but we're immune. So here's the here's the build. Um, and again, some auto casting, dual wielding, a morale card, shift form identical. Kaito starts in the base form for more morale fill. Um, Obsidian bracer, if you have it, it makes it a little bit convenient for breaking. Um, Treasured Ring, Empress Rod. If you don't have it, again, just use the best you can. Uh, and some auto buffing. Uh, bravery, if you can. And then Shift Form. I mean, he's built for damage, technically speaking. His damage was terrible. What I should have done is taken this morale card off of her, given her a magic card, and given Kaito the dual wield morale stuff. But anyway, um, he was built for damage. Here it is. Uh, just damage. It, his damage was irrelevant. He's basically a breaker and buff removal. And then 2B, in the shift form, is using Dragon's Brush, because we don't use an attack buff on turn 1, and this is an auto-cast 250 attack buff on the first turn, or 240 attack buff, so it helps. Um, other than that, um, Ice Resist from Cold Current, and then LB damage versus humans and spirits. So there it is, maxed LB, maxed human, maxed fairy. And then in the base form, we are built um, the best we can versus fairies and humans and I chose to not use the dark regions katana in case you don't have it um, you know dark the dark regions katana can give her more attack power but there it is uh, a little bit of chain speed in the base form and you know maxed on everything so there is the uh, the three turn clear with 2b using five units and you can cycle one unit per time it only takes three turns pretty quick you can get that all those those unit clear missions done and there you go all right see you in a bit